so I think I am live in the Facebook group. I'm not 100% sure as I'm using my MacBook. So um, I'm going to see if I can see me in here. Yes, I think I can. So good evening. Good evening. I'm just going to, I came up um, just so that I knew that I could uh, actually access Facebook and actually do the technology. So I'm going to check out for my phone. So if you see me looking from side to side, that's because I'm going to be looking at my notes and obviously seeing if you are on. So I hope you are having a good weekend or have had a good weekend. Um, bit of a cold one today again, um, but how's everything going? So do give me, um, I know obviously there's a delay, so do give me a wave or a high so that I know that I'm not just talking to myself. Um, but naturally, um, when you're watching this, if you've missed it, then just hashtag replay so that uh, we know who's who's watched it live and who's, um, you know, who's who's with me now. Ah, oh, Nicola is. Hi, Nicola. I just want to get rid of that. Hi, Caroline. Oh, so I can see the comments on my screen as well. That's awesome. <laughs> How are you doing? So I can see you all jumping on. Have you had a good weekend? Uh, tell me what you've been up to. Hiya, Nicola. So um, I was really, really lucky to see a friend, a very good friend of mine that I haven't seen in over two years today for the first time because her husband was incredibly ill with COVID. Um, and yeah, it's had a long term effect. Um, so it was lovely to see them today. So that's what I was doing earlier. Um, hi, Ruth. Hi. Uh, hiya. Hi, Saz. Um, who else? Who else is there? Have I missed? Uh, yeah, you're all coming on. So that's great. So tonight's talk is about emotional eating, something that we all obviously know. Um, I'm sure we've all done it at some stage and probably been massively exacerbated by COVID. But um, I just wanted to go through a few pointers. But naturally, obviously, if you have any questions, um, do feel free to pop them in and I will try and keep looking. Hi, Susan. Um, I just don't want to see if they disappear too quick for me. No snacking. Oh, well done. <laughs> I don't know how I can make that bigger so that I can see the comments and they don't disappear too quick for me. Uh, been working out, Caroline. Well done. And no snacking. Good. Excellent. Well done. And uh, Nicola, good week. Um, still got your cough. Oh, sorry to hear that. But I hope that, you know, obviously you're feeling better. Um, you're walking lots daily and on plan with eating, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, remember, you know, when we're not well as well, sometimes we do need to be paying attention to our nutrition, putting the best stuff in the body to, to help us fight, obviously, um, the virus and obviously boost that immunity. So well done, Nick. Hi, Claire. How are you all doing? So I don't know why, I put this, why I've got my jumper on. I should have taken this off because I'm going to be really, really hot. I'm not going to take it off now. Um, so I'm going to start off uh, giving you a statistic uh, according to, and I'm going to be looking at my screen, obviously, because I've got some notes here. But according to HSE in 2020, 2021, stress, depression um, or anxiety accounted for 50% of all work related ill health cases. So it's a huge, a huge thing, isn't it? I mean, COVID has changed our dynamic in how we work, working from home, whilst it seemed such a fantastic idea, and it is and has those benefits. Um, you know, it has a knock-on effect that a lot of us, and I know with you members as well, where you are just working like 24-7 and not actually then taking the break that you need um, to actually de-stress. Um, it has the benefits, obviously, that we can start working straight away, we can get the hours in, but naturally then we're not commuting, so we are doing a lot less neat, a lot less movement, um, and then we are continually working. So we're sort of tapped in all the time, which isn't really ideal, and this can alleve, um, elevate our, our stress levels, can't it, uh, because we're always contactable um, and expected, uh, probably by a lot of companies to to deliver on deadlines, even in the outside the frame of the nine to five. Um, but what was interesting on these stats that I saw on the data was it said that compared to all workers, 
um, obviously men are not going to agree with this, but uh, females uh, had significantly higher levels of uh, work-related stress uh, than their than their uh, male counterparts in all the different age groups. So really really quite telling i guess we we are always trying to juggle so many balls aren't we with child care if you had to homeschool um working and perhaps looking after um parents as well so hi denise hi nicole oh so your cold took a while to shift as well yeah unfortunately that does um yeah i've, I've heard um obviously gargling um ginger is supposedly really good and i think sam needs did tell me sam sam if you catch if you uh watch this back on replay tell me what was it that you suggested to one of the members about her persistent cough sam sam needs researches a lot as well so yeah do do drop that in there if you um remember sam and you happen to watch um but i also wanted to bring on the fact that obviously we have a a, a wide variety of age groups uh in abfab you know, obviously down to our youngest members of uh, pre-20, uh, right up to, you know, 70 plus. And, and it's absolutely fantastic um, that we cater for all of you. Uh, hi, Debs. Hi, Belinda. Hi, Denise. Um, welcome. And naturally, probably a huge part of uh, ABFAB does fall around the age 50-ish mark. Um, so we can't escape, obviously, menopause um and the mental well-being linked with menopause um because we have those fluctuating hormones um that don't just affect our physical health but obviously our mental health as well um with all of the symptoms mixed ages yeah <laughs> exactly caroline um that that lead to obviously these um or exacerbate our stress. So, you know, obviously the symptoms are anxiety, forgetfulness, I'll probably forget something to say on here, uh, loss of confidence, self-esteem, uh, you know, obviously changing moods from feeling low to sad, uh, depressed, um, as well as the anger and irritability, um, or bursting in tears, being emotional, you know, we, you know, and, and also like uh, concentration and brain fog. So naturally, with all of those hormones raging through our body, we are gonna, you know, be looking sometimes for something to support us. And this is where we then perhaps go into that emotional eating, uh, something to make us feel good or take away um, whatever stress that we're feeling at the time. Hi, Sam. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Um, but what's another stat that I, I came across was that um, women actually account for 50% of the UK workforce um, in the United Kingdom. And with over 4 million uh, plus 50 uh, ladies in work, um, it's a big thing, you know. And obviously, as I said, we've, we've brought our work home our stress levels have probably gone through the roof because we're trying to juggle so many things. So what can we do? Why, you know, what, what is it um, that causes us to, um, you know, reach for the chocolate bar? Um, well, it's down to our emotions. Um, and essentially what an emotion is, is a conscious mental reaction um, with an associated physiological um, and behavioural uh, feeling so you you know obviously naturally I'm doing this live so I've got a physiological um, response in the bright cheeks <laughs> and probably shaking hands um, so did I um, go and reach for the the biscuit tin beforehand no no I didn't um, but I, I did have a fair few crisps with my friends um, everything in moderation including moderation right um, but emotions they can create strong and unpleasant um, sensations it, you know sometimes we don't often notice the difference the emotion of, of something being stressful uh, raising cortisol um, or something exciting so it's a lot to do with how we frame it in our mind um, <laughs> hi Jane and Monica, you can relate to many of these. Yeah, can't we? Can't we all? Um, so these emotions, obviously, they can tend to have us uh, resort to to overeating, and they they come for a variety of reasons. It could be down to boredom, um, frustration, anger, disappointment, guilt, and shame. 
um, worry or confusion. Um, and obviously this does sort of perpetuate a bit of a vicious cycle with that overeating uh, because it leaves us vulnerable to obviously blood sugar sh shooting through the roof and then obviously it crashing and then needing that next pick me up again or resorting to that glass of wine or that bottle um, after a stressful day and, and we can also relate to the stress that we've actually had to go through with you know two years of covid uh, so Caroline said here, if I have a stressful day, I'll reach for a glass of wine, which will lead to the bad two choices. Yeah, because what it does is obviously it, it lowers our inhibitions um, and then it's, it's down to obviously in, in the brain that we're less likely to then be on point to, you know, stop those then reactions. A lot of the time as well, when you're drinking that glass of wine, you're probably watching something on TV again to passively escape. And then we are not being conscious of then making those forward choices. They just happen because they're near. The <laughs> 6am um, uh, is make me eat cakes in the morning. <laughs> they make you force feed you. Hi, Sarah. Um, lucky you. We haven't had any cakes at Stortford yet, ladies. Hashtag just saying. <laughs> Um, but one of the points there is, is noticing that passive um, action or, or intentional, you know, so a lot of the time when we overeat, we're not really um, doing it with a, 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 you know, I'd say an on point um, focus. It's, it's normally sort of passive and it's just a reach for it. it's a reflex. Um, but um, I read a, a book just recently by uh, Brian Wensink because I'm doing my level four nutrition coaching and um, it was mentioned in one of the lectures and it was called uh, Mindless Eating and it was really fascinating to understand why we do this, um, why do we mindlessly eat and a lot of it is like it isn't our fault, <laughs> don't have to blame ourselves, um, snitch dib, <laughs> you could say no, exactly says um uh, claire said oi um but it's down to a lot of the things you know grab bags the multi buys the big things everything is super size me everything is bigger um and i don't know about you but i grew up with the you must eat everything on your your plate so we're sort of hardwired to to finish everything um and yeah so if that means that you know there's a, a box of six cakes in there and you happen to know that there's one left well you, you don't want it to go stale do you you don't really want to throw it away so you'll just go and resort to that so <laughs> blame blaming them um so obviously in this book it um highlighted um a few points and it made me think um because it was saying that um are you eating to nourish your body or are you feeding um, for a deeper in emotional need? And you can break that into two um, areas, so physical and emotional. And the way that he wrote this was that physical, it builds gradually, um, you know, that hunger over time. It doesn't kill us um, and we can actually notice those hunger pangs um, and it strikes below the neck. Um, so it's the, the rumble of the tummy, um, the grayling, you know, so like, actually, I want some food. Um, it's still worrying <laughs> from this stress. <laughs> Love it, ladies. Um, it can occur three hours or two or three hours um, after eating. So it's that rumble in the tummy that you're actually feeling hungry again. Um, and it can temporarily be offset by drinking some water. Sometimes we... Uh, aren't actually hungry, we're, we're actually thirsty, and that could set that at bay. Um, also, it goes away once we've eaten and when we feel full um, and we generally feel satisfied. Um, as opposed to the emotional, um, you just develop it suddenly. You just, you know, you it, it strikes above the neck, so it's a mental point um, at random. You know, you've had a crap call or something didn't go well in the meeting and you just literally reflex uh go for that chocolate bar or, or whatever it is that biscuit um it still persists after drinking water um and it will still persist after eating uh, your dinner it's amazing isn't it how you can still eat more of something even though you're supposedly full but it always leads to that guilt um after you've eaten it 
so what are the coping strategies that we can um, employ to help us? And the first thing is, is awareness, really, um, and understanding that, you know, stop beating yourself up, you know, just be a bit kinder to yourself, but just be a bit curious. As I've said that one before, um, what's leading you to reach for that um, and understanding it. So coping strategies, the passive ones, you know, obviously that glass of wine is very easy to open. Um, it's generally less healthy. Um, it's it's super quick and easy. Um, it never requires any thought or effort um, unless you put the wine out in the garage and the fridge or something. You have to go and get it. <laughs> generally, the um, healthier uh, choices do require you to to actually be active you have to think about it first um, they require effort um, and sometimes they can be really really challenging um, getting yourself up ladies to do your 6am class i mean just high five for you and 6 30 at stortford i mean that is awesome that does require effort and that definitely can be challenging on a cold morning um, but obviously you feel so much better when you've done it um, so it's it's understanding when you're when you're doing something passively, i.e. you're not thinking about it, or when you're doing something active. Um, and there is a worksheet that Jane has uh, got with regards to this emotional eating. So she's got two workbooks, one uh, sort of explaining what I've gone through and also one that you can actually complete yourself. So to be honest, it gets you to sort of think from a score of one to ten um, about your emotional eating and, and perhaps taking the time to just think you know, we, we often are just running on autopilot, serving everyone else. And maybe if you sit down with that workbook and actually spend five, ten minutes, um, you're sort of facing it. <laughs> um, and there's there's the, the, the what's it called? The uh, serenity pet prayer. Uh, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change things that, um, I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And sometimes like stress it is all around us um things are going to happen out of your control you can't control what happens but you can control how you respond or how you deal with it so uh, jane just said she's just posted it on the main members page so do you know print those off um read them and obviously fill in that workbook to, to help you really um Plus, obviously, I'm going to give you some tools here that are in those workbooks. So what can we do to, to help us? Um, as I said, awareness is, is the main point. Um, but again, these tools um, can be down to be put into two different categories, uh, physical and, and mental. Um, so I'm going to give you some of these that you can perhaps employ um, when you next feel obviously one of those situations occurring. So firstly is understanding what is the trigger? Where did it come from? And just analyzing your behavior and noticing what you do. What you'll find is a lot of it's done completely on autopilot. You know, you'll have walked to the fridge, you'll have um, put the chocolate bar in your mouth. Um, I'm using my husband as an example. <laughs> he's working from home and, and he's definitely done that a lot. Um, and it's, also, it's a very passive, action like it he's just doing it not really thinking he's probably actually thinking about the stressful meeting that he's had or whatever else he's got to do um and it's just a relief um sometimes of perhaps as i said that that you still can be bored when you're busy with your job um so what could you do physical well breathing um the age-old one but it really does work wonders um it activates the parasympathetic nervous system and it's actually, um, it's a really good tool to have. Um, funny enough, I didn't actually do a few deep breaths before I started this, but I should have done. It's the out breath that calms our heart rate down and actually lowers physiologically because um, the diaphragm is in um, pushing. Um, so the heart has less space to pump the blood round, therefore the blood has to go more slowly, so therefore the heart rate slows. So when we are in a stressful situation, employ the deep breathing there's there's so many that you can google box breathing um in you know say in for four hold for four exhale for four and rotating that round um breathing in hold exhale 
um, Wim Hof as well, absolutely amazing. Um, they're all really good tools and they will help calm you down. And that's a, a, obviously it's a physical um, action that you're taking there. So you, you, you have the control. Um, so that was a really good one. Naturally, you're all coming to the gym uh, and exercising. So that's awesome. Um, exercise does uh, metabolize stress hormones, increases those endorphins, but still be mindful that exercise is a stressor. Um, so, you know, know when to work out um, and, and when to sometimes pull back. We, we aren't always going to be on top form um, when we come to the gym. Um, just understand your body and your cycle and, and do the best you can. You know, obviously the yoga that you had at the weekend, uh, awesome to, to then tap back into that body because uh, that's just as important. It's, you know, not just always go, 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 go. Um, but that's another physical tool uh, in your armory. Stretching, you know, how, how many of us do enough stretching? Uh, we generally tend to only do it when we're feeling injured um, or sore. Um, and yet it should be uh, such um, a daily, not chore, because it should be enjoyable. Um, I am trying to do it much more frequently um, before I even get out of bed, rotating my ankles, um, pushing my foot down and pulling it up because I tend to have pain in my lower back, um, creaking and, you know, all the usual things um, that hurt and ache. So I'll do uh, pelvic tilts like the clock. Uh, so tilting it down to six o'clock, so arching your back, then tilting it back up. So you're tilting towards your chest and then placing your hand on your hip bones and pushing down. So elevating one side, three o'clock and nine o'clock and rotating through. That's a really good one to do before you even get out of bed. Um, so Nick says, yeah, that's me. I don't stretch except when I'm working out. Yeah. Um, I tell you what it is. It's good because they say you should never put your alarm on snooze, but I do. And I use that time to do those stretches before I get out of bed. And that's been really, really helpful for me because I've had plantar fasciitis in my ankle and I hobble around like, you know, there's no way I can answer the door first thing in the morning. I'd probably fall down the stairs. So I have to mobilize um, my joints um, and that's really been helping me. So stretching is a great one. Um, getting outside. I mean, you've all posted some amazing pictures um i think sarah coach sarah wins the award for the most amazing pictures <laughs> you just like she's just got such a photographer's eye um but you can you can be drawn into to sarah's pictures um and um getting out there listening to the birds seeing you know obviously nature at its finest and getting out first thing in the morning is really important uh sets the circadian rhythm um, which helps you to sleep better, um, releases positive hormones to help with your clarity and focus, um, and generally just obviously gets the body moving, which is good, and it gets you 10,000 steps. <laughs> um, so another physical one, obviously, fueling your body with good nutrition. Um, you know, it isn't just we are what we eat, it's actually we are what we absorb. Um, so it's really important um, not just to eat the good food but but understand how your body works so whilst broccoli may be a superfood it may not agree with you and and it, you may not be getting the best out of it so so knowing when you feel bloated and maybe keeping a little bit of a diary um, and understanding about food combining and which things work well for you but ultimately um you know the power of of food is it you know it is our medicine or our poison depending on what we ingest um and as i said you know something really healthy could be poison for someone so you know i.e if they're uh, celiac allergic to gluten etc um so understand your body a little bit more but but feed it well um naturally stay hydrated um, this one's, uh, you know, on a debate as to, to how much, um, I would say at least two litres, um, if you're not even there yet and you think that you'll be needing to pee all the time, then just up it up and a little by little until you get there. But I'm, I try to drink three litres of water a day. Um, and I never used to drink water years ago. I didn't drink it at all. I can't believe I didn't. I <laughs> Um, it's so important, you know, our body's made up of water, our brain, our muscles, you know, we are, you know, 
majority of water so yeah do stay hydrated uh, another one have a bath get the essential oils out um if you're lucky enough get get the other half to massage you um again you know touch is really really good for for de-stressing um and yeah it's just a great way to to get connected uh zone out and chill um so epsom sorts in in bars is sort of going to come into my next one um is really really good uh because of the magnesium you can spray magnesium on the skin um so it's really good to absorb it that way you can obviously take it via um, a supplement um magnesium citrate uh, uh glycinate and bisglycinate are better absorbed than magnesium oxide um and i looked into this it said about rubbing into your feet and your stomach as well so if you think about um the the enteric system and the brain being um, the stomach or the gut being the second brain you can understand how that um, plays a part um, because a lot of emotions by the vagus nerve go up to the brain from the stomach first believe it or not hence butterflies um, so rubbing into the tummy and the feet obviously i'm not a medical practitioner or anything so please you know do check with your own gp with regards to any uh, supplements um, but Epsom salts are a win, especially after <laughs> your muscles have been walloped after a class, um, which is great. You know, that's great. Doms, doms are not that you should necessarily always get doms, um, but I had some serious ones uh, this week. Um, so I, I really do get you ladies. I was struggling to walk up and down the stairs and lower myself on the toilet. So <laughs> they still do come even when you when you train regularly. Um, and another one um having a drink before bed um you could say well obviously it's going to have me up to go to the toilet but the herbal teas chamomile is really good um there's so many uh, great teas green teas with um different um infusions in them um twinings they do lots again so there's like lavender as well so check those out perhaps switching up one of your teas um to help you de-stress yeah nicholas said doms are great <laughs> Uh, Belinda says using a magnesium lotion to support sleep helps those achy legs um, that won't keep still and neck and shoulders yeah I've actually been I've got a spray and it's got lavender in it is and, and I do spray it actually on the chest a bit wherever my doms are um, and yes uh, there's different ones obviously that you can buy um but yes they absolutely help and, and obviously rubbing them in so that you're increasing that absorption but you're giving those muscles a bit of a, a rubber mi manipulation because it's those fibers that have got a little bit sticky think of like cooked spaghetti and you want them to be like dried spaghetti so sort of rolling them out is it's just you know it's going to help you de-stress sarah says she loves nettle tea um yeah i've not tried that um and Victoria says she loves an Epsom salts bath. Yes, brilliant, Victoria. Yes, they, I I have got the bath salts on the side. I did have a hell of a lot of them when I was training for my marathons. Um, admittedly, I haven't got in the bath as much, but I do use the magnesium spray and it does help. I, yeah, nettle tea is never, it's never appealed to me, the sound of it. I don't know. So maybe I'll have to try it, Sarah. Um, and then we go into mental. So mental, what can we do? Um, so they're the physical things and they, as I said, can be challenging and, and they require effort, some more than others. Um, but the mental ones, um, the biggest one is is pause, you know, take some time to think before you do anything. Um, so don't let a reaction that again is the um, sort of uh, when we say about the chimp paradox in the brain the limbic system that's our evolution like a reaction um maybe just holding on breathe and and resisting that and then using conscious thought rather than a reaction as to what we actually want to do um yeah it sounds spiky tastes like red bush tea yeah i don't i think i've had red bush tea but i don't think i like that but yeah it does sound spiky i, I thought that as well <laughs> um but yeah by taking a moment um and breathing we can just sort of diffuse where that emotion's coming from what what has caused it um and maybe doing something else instead um so instead of going to reach for the chocolate bar i know we can say i'll oh, go and get a glass of water but maybe like you've got a dog or a cat go and stroke them 
they're going to love it and that's going to help you de-stress and and that is a a, a diversion um a different habit to what you would normally do to help as we've said before about those habits about changing them um also this one was interesting it was about going on an information diet um I know that um, we're all the same in in absorbing so much content. Some of it, you know, is is really useful for us because we're learning. But um, and this the, the stats for this are back into from two thousand and eight. This says that we were exposed to thirty four gigabytes of information per day. So it's going to be colossal now, huge. Um, and we just end up in a rabbit warren um, and lose hours. Um, and that isn't really doing us. Uh, any benefits for our emotional well-being and, and trying to cut away picking up a book um, as an alternative that's one of my um, uh, things that I put my tracker to to not go on my phone before bed and to read um, and that has that one's been been pretty good um, I you know I've, I've read a lot more I do like to listen to audible as well anyway but I am reading more consistently because I'm making a point of doing that but also because I've got the daily stoic uh, by Ryan Holiday and it's only like a paragraph so I know that I'm always reading that so I can tick that read every day <laughs> um, but also um, it says again so when you're pausing take time to think about decisions so it could be you know obviously a financial decision an emotional decision or whatever it is a job change or something like that give your time give yourself some space and time like just be kind to yourself ladies um and you, you give so much to everyone else you you owe yourself some time so do factor that in you know like even if it's like creating a meeting with yourself like actually book in some time for yourself that may be because you just want to sit down and have a cup of tea, herbal tea, nettle tea, Sarah, um, and and read a book, you know, because that, again, is going to help you calm. But um, some other ones that are really, really good are meditation um, and NSDR, non-sleep deep rest. So taking a moment to just shut your eyes, you're not necessarily going to sleep, um, but you know you're, you're almost giving yourself a little reboot in in the day and if you're working from home you know the five minutes that you're by the fridge you could you could literally do that protocol um get creative um get the uh get the pencils the paint brushes out or you know sewing or whatever it is uh jane i know you've uh, been knitting haven't you um, so again, that is, you can't be in a chocolate bar when you're, when you've got two knitting needles in your hand. Um, and again, you know, you're, you're focused on something else. So, and hopefully you're enjoying doing it. So, uh, for me, that would probably be pick up my guitar, which I haven't done in a long time. Um, but again, then you lose time and that, and then that passes that urge and that emotion to perhaps have that, whatever it is that you're your go-to. Um, and another one um, is connect with friends, which I just said at the start, um, I haven't seen my friend in two years and she came into my kitchen, she burst into tears. Um, and it's really, yeah, quite emotional because he, he nearly died and, and he, it was tough, very, very tough. And he's not out of the woods, he's actually suffering PTSD on the back of it and it's very, very much baby steps and this is his first real sort of outing to see as he's god father to my my sons um but the benefit you know it's like you've just filled your tank up to be able to see and connect uh, we are very social beings so yeah making time for for others is really really important um and one of the other ones is journaling good old-fashioned journaling I mean there's so many good ones out there that you can buy or just a you know bog standard notepad um, and hopefully then that would get you off your phone because you've got a pen and paper and start writing down obviously the day that you've had the emotions that you've experienced why you felt them um, what were your wins um, of the day what did you do well you know obviously don't always try to critique yourself. I mean, yes, we do need to do that, um, but also praise yourself as well. What did you do well? Um, and I always loved, uh, and I, to be fair, my journey has dropped, but uh, when I was doing it, um, there was a point in there of a good deed of the day. 
and then I would write down what that was. It could have been opening the door for someone. It could have been letting someone through. It could be, um, you know, like buying a cup of tea in the queue for someone to say that they could have that or in the car park and giving them your ticket. You know, it, we really do feel good on the back of, of helping others. So, yeah, good deeds. So journaling is really good. Um, and as I said, like these physical things that you can do. So one of them is obviously print off that worksheet. Uh, two, as I spoke about right at the start, um, obviously, if you are in perimenopause or menopause, um, the workshops on Tuesday, I believe the 1st of February, it's seven o'clock, it's five pounds. Um, James obviously put all the details in uh, the app and obviously the Facebook uh, page uh, for the speaker. Um, you know that's a, a great one to to obviously attend to learn and understand more because there's you know we, we certainly haven't really had as much information it is changing and that's really positive but i think that's definitely something um that i will be attending as well um and have awareness so that was the main point like have a growth mindset know the things that you uh, can change what you can't change um, but don't get stuck in a rut and believe that is your identity uh, you are better than that you can do anything you set your mind to within reason um, and small changes done consistently over time do equal that success so have that growth mindset there's a really good book uh, carol dweck growth mindset I've read quite a few actually i've got a really uh, long book list on my web page so if anyone wants to know some of the books that I've read over the years. Um, I've listed all of them, so let me know, you can DM me. Um, and I wanted to say a few books um, that I thought would be relevant. Um, I've mentioned it to Monica, um, but about um, everything we need to know about the menopause by Kate Muir. Um, I'm just listening to it on Audible um, and she's very funny. Um, she was the one that's done the documentary with Davina McCall um, and it's, yeah, it's just, so good because every time we listen or read something we probably will absorb something new because we're at a different stage to take on that um, information so that one's really really good um so monica you said good earth teas are my new favorite hibiscus rose and sweet berries tea mm. um and claire said what about when the inner voice just doesn't go away and you want the crisp you know you'll feel bad after you fight the urge for a certain amount of time but then you eat them feel bad then continue to sabotage by eating something else bad, um, yeah. Um, we've all got that inner voice, um, and I think sometimes um, it depends what what's triggering it. Um, so it's being honest with why you want it. Sometimes it could be that your body is craving um, the particular, uh, not not say obviously the crisps per se, but maybe the sodium. Um, so when we sometimes reach for something sweet, it, it may not actually be that, but it's our body's urges to want to keep us alive and fuel us. So it might be that it wants some amino acids. Um, and sometimes, again, we get confused with eating something sweet um, to satisfy, but actually our body is craving the amino acids. So we get the sweet stuff, but we don't get the amino acids. So then it starts that craving again, and then we go and eat something sweet, but it still hasn't got what it wants and we crave again. So have a think about it because I know like certain times of the cycle, we'll want to eat more food. Well, that's because we need to, um, you know, and, and allowing for that, you know, accept that, that that's going to happen. But um, I read somewhere when they said about, um, I think it was either quark or cottage cheese or something like that. Um, it's really, really good at, at curbing those cravings if it's sweet, for example. So if you are wanting something like that, maybe structure um, that you do have snacks throughout the day. So say you have your three meals, your breakfast, your lunch and your dinner, that you know you've got two snacks. It's almost sort of hitting it head on before you need it. And if you know that you're having a snack and it's got the, you know, the, the relevant macros that you need, the carbohydrates, the fat and the protein, you're less likely to feel those cravings. But obviously, if it's an emotional trigger, then that's when that physical and mental comes in. Um, so uh, I'm just having a look. 
Oh, Katie Muir, Kate Muir. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Deb said, makes sense if you do lots of exercise, can lose electrolytes, magnesium, sodium, etc. Yeah. So it's sort of understanding, is it triggered from, as we said, above the head or below um, and understanding that emotion? Um, but sometimes it's just accepting it um, and not, you know, beating yourself up. Just like say to yourself, um, I'll just come back here, Claire. If you do actually want something and it's not going away, factor that perhaps within your macros so that you can have it um, and then you it, it's eaten without guilt. We, we're not, whilst we want to eat healthily, it's it's about 80-20. If we were to just, and I have done like um, a shred of eating completely clean um, and eventually I got into it and, and you get used to it, but then yes, you can um like obviously crave after and go on the rebound a little bit um, and then feel crap for it um, but if you factor it in you know your diet should be something of a lifestyle that you can keep um, and sustain um, over time so if if it's for you that you know that you want to have those crisps maybe it's um breaking them down into um, little smaller portion sizes and know that that's part of your snack along with something healthy and then there's no guilt um, if that's the emotional trigger but also if you structure your meals um, you're going to be able to go and eat something because we, we get pleasure out of chewing it's a sensation you know that anticipation so um, having those there um, possibly can negate it not completely obviously if we are stressed but if you're if you're doing it all of the time then then that's why you need to look at it um and what's causing you to do it but like you said um trying a different tactic of the deep breathing and and just that awareness just just being aware like if all of you next week feel the trigger come on but just actually acknowledge it that's a step forward as opposed to perhaps last week just reaching for it without even noticing um but Try not to beat yourself up about it um, because that's not really helping and, and all we'll do is end up in that sort of vicious circle. Um, Jane has said, eating clean forever is not sustainable. Um, I factor in two chocolate rice cakes every day. Exactly. Um, I have to have texture crunchy stuff. Exactly. Um, and that's the whole point. Um, it's, it's about what is diet a diet is one that you can stick to so there is no perfect diet and if you actually was to look at all of the diets out there and this is why our fab is great because it's just showing you uh what good foods are what um what exciting meals you can have what colors you can have on your plate uh, what enjoyment you can get from food and that it doesn't have to be purgatory boring um but all of them ultimately will have you eating more fiber um having more water and reducing those processed foods um, and obviously the vegetables um so yeah the reading material i was going to say um it was it, i found it really interesting mindless eating by brian wansick um pretty much just saying that it's if you look about look about it everything is big you know like the serving sizes the bags the portions this and one of the tips that he said was to to break these things down into tubs or, or packets to the size that you want um, and only having that. Um, and then if it's something that you enjoy, then you're not restricting yourself. Um, and yeah, he's, he was the one that saying about noticing the difference between whether it's emotional and physical, the difference between what's triggering it. Um, naturally, sleep is really, really important. Our choices will go to pot uh, when we've not slept well. So um, trying to get at least seven hours and I haven't been great at that on my tracker um unfortunately um it, I sometimes just hit below seven but I was I was really at five hours so um last year or the year before so I have improved it and I I'm looking to improve it because I know that I'm not going to be able to um lift heavier you know uh, work out have that energy if i'm not sleeping and because obviously this is where all the magic happens of us repairing but also you know our choices are going to be shocking if we are tired so do focus on your sleep and a really oh, there's there's quite a few uh, books about sleep um that i've read but i will say this one matthew walker why we sleep he, he's fantastic 
Um, I read that back in 2017. And, and whilst it's really simple, it really makes sense. And sometimes it's worth revisiting the most simple things that we need to do. It's not all about fancy gadgets and everything. It's the simple things that we need to do on a daily basis. Um, and as I said, the other one about menopause. But um, any questions? Hi, Neve. Um, any questions? Post them below. What what strategies do you use to, or what have you found works for you to, um, you know, obviously resist the emotional eating? What what triggers uh, do you feel, you know, set you off? Put your comments below. So for me, I know it's a lot of the time it's passive. It's not paying attention, um, reaching for something without much thought. Um, and when you structure your meals so that you, you eat, obviously, and you're keeping that protein um, in every meal throughout the day, that's pretty much called like protein pulsing. Um, really good for the body and certainly good if obviously you're wanting to build your muscle. Um, and it also um, makes you feel fuller for longer. So that helps obviously with those cravings. So Caroline's saying, if I want wine, I have a pint of water. Well done. That's awesome, Caroline. High five you, a pint. Oof, do you down it in one go as well? <laughs> Competition. Um, Katie said, tiredness, boredom, habit, watching TV. Yeah, see, these things are, are you know, passive, aren't they? Um, so easy. So the point is again is setting out a dish of a snack that you want popcorn's a really good snack because you don't actually have to add anything to it but um i actually sprinkle cinnamon on it um if i want wine as a reflex all right okay um jane says i drink sparkling water that helps suppress any cravings yeah i do like sparkling water um it just and sometimes it's just changing it up a little bit work <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Claire said, please, can you post the recommended reading? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you that, but you can actually just check out um, my website the on my blog. Um, I've got all of the books there um, as well. Um, I do, I do, I put hot water in cold water to get it out. <laughs> yeah, see, cold water is really hard to drink really, really fast. Um, but... Um, Staying hydrated, a uh, little tip that I do, I try to drink six to eight gulps of my water. Um, I do, this is, you'll see me with this, this has been my go-to ever since I did my shred two years ago when I started drinking three litres of water. Yes, I do drink out of glasses, but <laughs> but that I have with me and um, I drink six to eight sips first thing in the morning. I try to get my three in by lunchtime, doesn't always work. And then three throughout the day, obviously, because you don't want to be glugging it all. Um, what else has someone said? Um, Kelly, I used to sit at night and eat crap watching telly. Now I factor in a protein smoothie at night. Yes, it's so yummy and feels like a treat. And now, oh, oh, and have now got the entire family into having them, which stops them snacking. And so that helps me. Do. Oh, that is awesome. And do you know you could, uh, with that protein, you could make that into like um, more of a dessert. So if you was to do two scoops, um, it would be thicker. Um, but you also could do like protein ice cream. Um, so mix in your protein, uh, frozen banana blitz in it. That would be really good. Um, but also, again, it depends what your goals are. So from a health perspective, we shouldn't um, eat. They say with it, well, you try to not eat within an hour of getting up and we should try to not eat within 90 minutes to two hours before we go to bed from a health perspective, but it depends what your goals are. If you ladies are looking to, to build muscle, then we do need to have protein going through the body. And if you think when you've been asleep for minimum six hours, um, then there's no protein. So a protein shake first thing and a protein shake before you go to bed, not only is gonna help you feel fuller, um, it's also gonna help with that muscle protein synthesis. Um, so um, I don't know if there's all the comments have gone so quick. So, I also find that I need cast iron willpower to resist other people who want you to drink as a so yeah. Yeah, that that was a tough one uh when I did my shred Caroline um in the first lockdown um because everyone was drinking and I didn't. Um but it got easier the longer that I'd done it. Um but 
that's their issue, not yours. Um, and a lot of the time people project their um, their issues onto you. It's because they feel um, it makes them feel uncomfortable because they actually know that you're doing really well. So just just know that you're really, really good and that you're going to feel great in the morning because you haven't drunk. Um, but you can also get around that as well. Like if it's vodka, vodka and coke or whatever, um, you know, a Coke in there is is Coke. No one would know that there was or wasn't a vodka in there. Um, same with tonics and stuff. You can get around it, like, and pretend that you've had, you know, like, tonic with with vodka or gin and you just haven't. Um, Sarah said, um, I thought your hoodie, I thought your hoodie said Spotify. <laughs> Protein ice cream. I find it harder sticking to healthier choices in the winter than the spring summer. Yeah, because again, that's uh, down to obviously the light, um, uh, the longer days. So um, our hormones, are, we, we, we get obviously melatonin rises um, as the evening draws in. Um, we get those happy hormones in the morning. Um, so yes, it is easier. And if you think of hibernation and animals um we're animals as well in essence um yes we are sort of stockpiling for the winter um so yes it is much easier in the summer uh drinking enough water is also on my to-do list dark chocolate is my weakness but i feel it's not under control well dark chocolate though monica um is is good i mean if you can aim to get up the higher end uh 70 percent plus 80 i have done 100 percent before but it it felt like a <laughs> I was eating it and it's like <laughs> it didn't feel like chocolate i must admit um but I, it took me a while to get used to eating dark chocolate but there was no way that i'd eat more than two squares of that um so again if that's your treat um then then savor it suck it um put put the chocolate in the freezer as well so again um if if you do want like say you like i don't know a mars bar and that is what you want you could do mini Mars bars or you could cut it up into smaller pieces and put it in the freezer and you only have one sort of mouthful it'll take you a while to chew through that um uh, Kate says I have this problem about willpower I've had to be really firm with friends and tell them I'm working really hard to be healthy and would they appreciate the small yeah that's good yeah but as I said it's it's their insecurities not yours um and a good friend um family member um should should support you uh, Deb said, I like to have smoothies in the evening. They are filling too, and lots of great tasting ones on the AbFab app. Satisfies sweet cravings too, especially the Snickers smoothie. Yeah, that sounds lovely. You know, in essence, the Snickers smoothie has got, you know, healthy uh, protein, um, fats and carbohydrates and tastes like a Snicker. What can't you love about that unless you hate peanuts? <laughs> or related to them. Belinda, uh, I now have a better relationship with food, having realised overeating and eating the wrong foods does not help you emotionally, mentally or your health. I now don't deny myself anything, it's all in moderation. Absolutely. And naturally Belinda, obviously having learned and studied nutrition like you have, it's, it's digging deeper into the weeds isn't it? and understanding how the body uh, metabolises the food we eat and why. It's a huge part um but yes um you know food is is as much about pleasuring the chewing as, as it was said earlier about the crunching the tasting and and we shouldn't you know demonize any of that uh, just making better choices nick said uh yeah love the snicker smoothie kate said hi yeah this just to your friends good idea uh fall over to make it real like that caroline <laughs> hi joe um oh uh, drunk people never notice no do you know what i did um years and years ago um i was drinking beer like Bud, uh, budweiser and i just filled the budweiser bottle up by, by the tap it was it was a new year's eve party and i just didn't want to drink loads so when no one was looking i just filled the bottle up with water no one knew the difference they thought i was drinking loads of beer and i was just drinking water so yeah if you if, if it's a green or, or brown bottle no one can tell um, so that's another one. Um, Nick says, I had dark chocolate 80% plus, but only two squares is, yeah, exactly. Cause, um, I think it's, it's, it's quite, you know, but I, I keep the, the chocolate, dark chocolate in the freezer. So I think that's makes it a nice treat as well. 
if my husband doesn't get there and nick it, which he did. Um, any other questions, ladies? Otherwise, I'm going to love you and leave you. Um, I hope this has been useful. Um, as I said uh, at the start, if you are watching this back, then can you do hashtag replay so Jane can have an idea of how many people are um, taken on board. Do let us know if you download the workbook and if you know, like let us know in the Facebook group if you have um, completed the workbook and, and how it's helped you. Um, so it's because your successes absolutely motivate others. Um, Grapes in the freezer. Yes, that's a definite one of mine as well. I mean, grapes are very high in sugar, so there's something that, you, you know, you could pop a lot of them, um, but if they're in the freezer, and also if you cut them in half as well, because you don't want to choke, choke on them, um, then um, you have to suck them like sweets, <laughs> um, and it reduces the amount that you have. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jane. Thank you. Um, do let us know. Um, obviously, do speak to any of the coaches um, after the sessions. If you've got any issues or questions, um, we're here to help you. And just remember that you are um, imperfectly perfect as you are. You are inspiring and motivating um, everyone. Like epic this uh, week, Caroline. Um, you had a lovely birthday, hopefully. And just it's so um, empowering to see that. Um, reaction on the back of your post um, this week um, and that just fuels all of us to be better individuals and human beings and that's all we're trying to, to be is a team support one another help one another as they said when you see someone that needs that lifting them up we all are going to have down days nothing is always perfect and never believe what you see um, on social media remember that you know because a load of old crap could be happening behind uh anything else has anyone else said uh oh thank you thank you oh you're getting a treat in the morning lucky you <laughs> thank you um thank you very much uh, appreciate it have a great evening and just be more mindful curious and aware and i will catch you again soon Bye bye